cutting high space. Um, we're having some problems with our laser cutter, so we're going to change that to two. But first, what I want to do is take some take some power readings from it. Uh, basically, what we got here is a 10 watt thermopile laser power meter head, and we put a, an attenuator in the front of it because this laser is apparently capable of delivering about 35 watts when it's running properly. So that's just a bit of steel mesh. Um, basically, we're taping that to the front of there. We're going to stick it under the beam. Uh, we've removed the lens from the front of this, uh, of this head here. So I'm going to stick that under there. We'll, um, so if we're running at 14 milliamps of tube current, we see it stabilize. At about two and a half on there. Sort of two, two and a half, three. And it's making that squealy noise at this point. And it's just stopped. And the power shut up. And the power shut up. So it's hovering around five, five and a half now. So I'll stop. Cool. Right, so let's see what happens now. I haven't touched the power settings at all. I haven't done anything with the current, so hopefully we've got about the same thickness of steel guys in between the beam and the meter, so let's go. So it's making the squealy noise and hovering around well, just under two. That could be an error in changing the detector around a little bit. Um, so I'm going to stop and start again right away. And try and get... There we go, it's not squealing now. So it's gone up to about four. See, it says watts, but this isn't watts. This isn't calibrated to anything. We've stuck a lot of stuff in front of it. So now that, that gauze is now glowing red hot, which it wasn't doing before. And it's not a stable glow. It's a bit... Well, you're not going to see much because of the aiming laser, but it's it's an unstable glow. So I've just stopped. And we'll let it settle down. So that's the behavior now, right? And I'm happy to say that that's the, a, a representative test of his behavior at the moment. Um, Let's see what happens when we change out to take the laser cutter out of its home. Um, and I guess we'll open it up and show you around it a little bit in case there's no other videos on YouTube of this thing being opened. Yeah, right. Um, so it's real simple, real agricultural, sort of super, super basic. Power goes in there, USB goes in there. Controller board, um, little wall wart for some reason, they've built it in that way. Um, then the high voltage power supply. So that basically takes some power and some signals from the controller board and um, drives many kilovolts up that silicon wire there. Now you can see the little red mm -hmm. curly Q thing there. Um, that goes through an insulated panel in the, in the wall there. Comes out the back where the tube is. Oh yeah, there's all the wiring for the front panel controls. Boring shit, it's just analog stuff. Um, there's the tube. So we think that is done. No real way to know because we don't have a power supply that's known working to test it with. It could be either the tube or the power supply. I'm not really convinced of anything with this thing. It's just so sort of strange and weird and behaving weirdly and making strange noises and so all that uh, that I don't really have much confidence in anything with it. But we'll give it a shot. Um, we've got a new tube, there's going to be no harm in using it, so we're going to swap it out. Uh, so I guess the basic procedure is going to be um, cut that wire with enough to, to, to glue back onto if we need to, undo one, two, three, four Allen keys, pop the ground lead off, um, pop the water hoses off, install the new tube, reconnect all the high tension, put all the screws back in, and um, see how she goes. Make sure we get it in the right way, um, laser beam goes that way. Realign the mirrors, and hopefully we can get it back up and running. Hopefully. Right. In a bit. Basically, it's a bit sort of, sort of weak. It's not. I don't know. I'm, I haven't got a lot of confidence in it. So, I mean, that that could have caused problems. It's not, um, not necessarily what the particular issue was, but obviously. Um, Obviously, yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see, I'm still changing the tube, the, a three millimeter Allen key, ball driver, whatever, 
just leave some just some clips just here. I don't want to just wear these gloves, but you know. It's gonna show a bit of detail down here. Yeah, cool. Are you awkward? Will that just lift off? Okay, that's fine. You only need to disconnect one side of the clips, so that's quite good. So it's just a strappy. Yep. Cool, so those are off. I'm just gonna check the instructions and see what they say about the water hoses. So there we go. Still some water in it. Just gonna lift that end up a bit. Um, and I'm gonna take the advice of chopping them off because we've got plenty. So. Same for the other end. Man, that is full of shite. It is, isn't it? Should have gone it up. Well, well, that's not going to help. Well, it's not actually blocked in any way, it's just got shit in it. I'm not really that worried about it. I don't know which, uh, which is the in and which is the out. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. One of them's got a chamfer on the end of it. No, it's going to be whichever way we put it back. And that's in, going to be it? the other way. That the um, I have a feeling this was the in. Yeah, I get the feeling. I think right. I remember the bubbles going that way. Okay. Interesting. I've never actually seen one of these before in 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 such detail. So. Yeah. You want to talk us through it? Okay. So basically, what there is here, there's a there's an outer jacket. That's um. Yeah, wow. Output coupler, output coupler, high reflective mirror. Um, you can see the little round electrodes in there. Right down the middle, you can see the um, where the discharge goes, and on the outside of that is a water cooling jacket. And around the outside of all of it is some sort of envelope, and I guess that's where the the is there more water cooling in that? I don't know. I wouldn't think so. I guess that's a gas envelope or something, or yeah, I don't know. Um, one thing, there's no Brewster window, so the light that's coming out of here is not polarized, I don't think. Um, and you can see the water cooling circuits. It's just a nice piece of glass blowing. I'm quite impressed with the, the, the work that can be done even in glass today. So, you know, people are still making these. You can still buy them new. Um, it's definitely still a, a current technology. So, um, yeah, there's some hardworking people out there making these even if they are very cheap for what they are, and maybe not of the highest quality, but who am I to judge? I'm sure they're very tricky to make right. The gas fill in them is a, is a very crazy cocktail of all. It's not just CO2. There's neon and all the other different stuff on it. If you want to learn more, the best resource for learning about lasers is Sam's Laser Fac. And if you, um, if you have any questions and want to talk about lasers with a bunch of laser geeks, you can go on photonlexicon.com. And um, I'm, I'm Robot Army on there, so see you there if you're into this kind of stuff. Well, yeah, welcome to our little um, chemical lab here. I did a little video here the other day about etching PCBs, and that all works. We got all the kit, like, right here. We're talking about bubble tank, box with light, um, developer, etchant, sink, boards, kettle for making it warm. It's like actually really ready to go. So here's a fancy lab sink that actually is, is, is crazy powerful. Um, oh no, the tube doesn't fit. Oh no, the tube does fit. A little bit of gentle persuasion. Yeah. You know, one barb is good enough, I'll just hold it. Right.
Oh yeah. Did you get wet? No. Good. <laughs> I'm glad I got quick reflexes. <laughs> Shit. Maybe I need to improve my technique a little bit. This isn't actually doing anything yet. Yeah, you're gonna run around a pipe cleaner through it or something. Hang out around this brand new laser tube with me. At each end you can see that there's a there's a little post sticking out. Um, that post obviously connects to the electrode inside the tube. In order to do that, it's got to get past what's called a glass to metal seal. And that's a pretty obvious what it is. It's a seal between a piece of glass and a piece of metal. The reason that those are tricky to make is that glass and metal have different coefficients of thermal expansion. And this stuff gets hot. That's why it's water cooled. So what's, what's usually done is there's cobar, which is a strange alloy, in between the glass and the metal. Um, and what I really don't want to do is um, heat up these pins too much to damage the integrity of that seal, because it's one of the number one failure points of gas lasers. Um, it's common to all glass-tubed gas lasers. Um, literally every single one has one, so argon lasers, helium-neon lasers, Anything that's sort of a sealed mirror, uh, well, even, yeah, pretty much any gas laser that's a sealed system, so not a flowing gas laser, um, will have a glass to metal seal on it. Um, so I'm going to follow the instructions that the guys at Brighton Hackspace have, have so kindly posted on the internet, because I think they're absolutely reasonable. Um, what I don't want to do is transfer very much heat into that pin. Um, so, sort of counterintuitively, I'm going to run the the iron quite hot um, in order that I can melt the solder but not heat up the pin. Anyways, let's get started. Let's talk about it. I'm going to use all lead solder um, because it's good. How hot's the iron? 400 degrees. Um, and I'm going to put some gloves on in order to avoid getting oil on this brand new tube. I don't know if it's, a, if it's an actual issue, but I know with often with high-powered light bulbs, xenon lamps and that sort, it's very important to not get grubby fingerprints all over it, because you'll, you'll create hot spots. It's certainly not going to hurt, is it? To, uh, no. Take precautions. No, exactly. Is there anything we can give it a wipe down with, a degreaser? Um, we could we could wipe it with methanol or isopropyl alcohol or anything like that. Um, sort of low flashpoint solvents that'll leave after a little bit. But um, I don't really think it's going to be necessary. I don't think it's a problem. One day, I'm going to make some fume extraction for this place. One day. Right. So I left my strippers at home. But it's convenient because I got the perfect snaggle tooth first. <laughs> So I've got a nice length of wire there. What I'm going to do is just twist this a little bit.
right. Oh, these are really good cutters. Right, that's good. And a bit of flux. Just to make a nice joint. And quickly clean. And tin the tip to aid in heat transfer. And Go for it. Oh, Mr. Blubby. Okay, now that seems to have taken, but I'm not very happy with that joint. So I'm going to let that cool down a bit. I'll come back to that after, and I'll try and do the next one better. It's a little bit better, but still not great. I don't know what their pins are made of, but they don't want to take blue. Um, so the first thing that I want to do... Oh look, it's got all fancy barcodes and everything on it. Cool. Um, is put these little rubber, I didn't, I didn't really go through this, but I took some rubber stuff off the list name, the last tube. Um, so I'm just going to put that back in those clips. Now does that fit? Right, they looked exactly the same size to me. Hmm? Uh, they looked exactly the same size and uh, arrangement. No, I was just seeing if the bubble wrap fits in between. The... Uh, right, do you want it to? Yeah. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. What timing? I bet you I don't know who that is. One moment. Got the hoses off of it. They were full of chud. They're still a bit full of chud. We tried to eliminate some chud using high pressure water. Uh, got some of it out. They're a little bit cleaner. We gave the cutter a bit of a, a, a clean up around where the laser is housed. I've attached two wires to the um, little pins coming up the ends. And um, we're just about ready to fit the laser cutter back in, except I've got to connect the hoses. So what we're going to do is um, get the ends of that hose into some hot water. Um, Simon, my man, is trying to boil the kettle for it, so put that back on. We'll get those ends in some hot water to make it a little bit easier, make the, the silicon a little bit more supple, so we can slip them onto the barbed connections at the ends of the tube because they're quite steep and getting the other two, the other um, connections off was quite difficult and it's actually recommended in Brighton Hackspace's instructable on how to change the laser cutters. I'm going to freshen up these ends a little bit as well so they're nice and flat. no tool so satisfying to use as a sharp knife. Not even a laser. Not even a laser. Yeah. Right, trusty pack space pedal. Not to say something, but you know, water, 
High voltage electronics. Made in China. <laughs> hmm. Keep clear. Yeah. And the rest. I really like that method of um, heating up the end of the tube before putting it on there. That made that so much easier. That's going to be hot enough. Hmm? Yeah. I'm in no rush. Yeah, look at that. Straight on. Straight on, no problem. Cool. Good. Great. So what have you just done? Right, well first off we've given up on that little camera. Because <laughs> it's not working. Uh, what I just did was... Um, he's now receiving a firmware update from Scott. Oh, good, 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 good. Um, right, what I've done is we put the laser in, we've hooked up the water tubes, we've bolted it down, we've got the high tension wire and the other one, the ground stripped. I'm going to say this about three times, right? Make sure you put the thing on, that's a bit of silicon tubing, before you complete the joint. Because you don't want to do it twice, that's just a waste of time. So make sure you put the sleeving or whatever you're going to use on before you make the joint. Why would you use that and not just heat shrink? Um, silicon's better at high voltage insulation. Blob. Mr. Blobby. No, Who taught this, a good day. Who taught this jerk to glue? Right, so let's have a go at making this joint. I'll make a fool of myself. I'm going to expose myself to the wrath of YouTube commenters with this video, I'm sure. No, you did it wrong, noob! <laughs> Tell you now. I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> this is my house. If you don't like it, change your damn channel. Right. What I'm going to do is put a bit of something in between the thing and the tube. So I just don't get excessive amounts of shit everywhere. Are you expecting it to spit? Yeah, it will a little bit. I'm going to put some flux on it just to make a nice joint. So. Maybe a can solder, eh? <laughs> Wicked. Right, where's some side cutters? Right, so um, what we've done is made a solder joint to the tinned and wire wrapped um, little pin sticking out of there. And I've put the silicon on the wire before I made that joint. Very important. The number of times that I've forgotten that and sworn even more than I have in these videos. Um, yeah, it's not 
yeah, just do it. Put the thing on first. Um, basically, what I'm going to do now is push it down over the joint carefully. Try not to stress out the joint too much. And push it down so it sort of makes contact with the glass. And then I've got some, what is this called this stuff? Silicon sealant, isn't it? Five modulus acid toxy multi purpose silicon for sealing glass, aluminium, and sanitary wear. It's silicon. It's silicon. <laughs> and I'm going to stick that down to hole as far as I can without stressing out the joint. It's already pissing off. And. Fill it up. You're at the bottom. And I'm at the top. Just like that. Ta -da. So that is a very, very good um, high voltage insulation method. That's like as good as it gets, as far as I know. Um, so hopefully those will, those will support the joints. That will make a good insulator around that high voltage connection. And uh, will, you know, not fail. We'll see. Right, so I guess all we need is um, cooling. Well, here we are. Uh, we've changed the tube in our laser, and I'm going to do stuff now. Um, so I'm going to turn the power right down and um, turn the laser on. So what I'm going to do is adjust the position of the tube in order to get the beam onto what you, well, you probably can't see it. There's an optic behind there. Um, that reflects the laser light onto the little moving carriage with the lens assembly and everything on it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use a use an infrared sensitive camera as this laser generates infrared light to uh, try and find that spot. So I will need to employ a different method of detection because this laser is working very well. Uh, had some problems. I was trying to use my camera as an infrared detector. Forgot that we're dealing with light that's 10 microns long. So, uh, yeah, we're uh, trying to gain. Basically, what I've done is I've put a piece of thermal paper on the first optic that this system hits after, well, the second optic. So it comes out the mirror from the laser, hits the first mirror, and goes that way and um, then it's the second mirror and then moves that way. So I'm looking at that second mirror. I've got a piece of thermal paper taped over it and I've marked where the, the outline of the mirror is. So hopefully, if the laser tube is aligned properly, which will be a friggin' miracle, because it's wobbly as hell, um, we're in business. So I'm gonna try and, try and fire this as quickly as possible to make as small a mark as possible. Okay. I'm turning the power right down, so I'm right below the threshold of the lasing. So I'm going to turn it up just a little bit and try again. Okay. The optics are aligned. We should be able to cut now. See? I got my little um, little test piece here. This is a piece of thermal paper tore off the top of the receipt. It's actually quite a good way to see what's happening inside a, an infrared laser, obviously, uh, since the laser generates heat it makes the thermal paper go dark at very low power levels. Um, what I was doing is I put this on the um, on the lens assembly at the, f at the business end of the laser, I guess you call it, this guy here. So I put the, um, the thermal paper just around the aperture that allows the light to come from this mirror and shoot down through the lens assembly into the workpiece. Basically, in the first instance, I was wildly off, um, and I just pushed the laser tube around until it M measured sort of vaguely centrally in that in that window. Um, so now we're going to do a test cut. This is the final one here. So you can see that the on the on the left hand side that was the last one. It's not. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not going to be perfect. There's a that probably doesn't need to be perfect. And you just mark that circle around by rubbing it with your finger. Yeah, I just put this on the on the optic, and then or on the on the on the optic mount, 
and then just took my fingernail and marked a circle around because when you scratch this, you generate a little bit of localized heat, and that turns the thermal paper black. So I mean, you can see like if I put that on there, you can you can make it go dark just by scratching it with your fingernail. Um, so yeah, did that, and um, that allowed me to see where I was aiming for. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, we should be ready to cut now. Yeah. What up, folks? We changed the tube, and it seems to work, so we're going to test it again. I've got the power meter in there with a bit of shit in front of it, and I'm going to set power to, what was it, 14 milliamps? Yeah, 14. So I'm going to set it to... Oh. It's working. Yeah, that's... Let me put it to you that way. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Is this fan sucking? Yeah. All right, let's try that Take again. Take two. <laughs> Some shit caught fire last time, so we're doing something different. We've hooked up to the extraction pen, so if it catches fire again, we won't smell it. <laughs> right, uh, I'm gonna set the power level. Jesus. Ready to go? Yeah, hang on. We need to put some more, some more shit in. Jesus. So talk to me, Ryan. What are we saying here? What I'm saying is, is that this shit's bursting into flames because there's so many watts of laser. So uh, it's a nice problem to have, to be honest. Okay, it's not catching fire so much now, but I'm telling you that is burning it. Camera, CCD, here in... yeah. Right, here we are again. Uh, I've removed the target beam stop from the, from the front of the power meter. And you can see, I don't know if you can see some real good little, <laughs> little dimples from the, from the laser cutter in there. We've blasted the hell out of that piece of plastic. And now I've got the power meter on. Um, now, before we were reading something around five-ish on the power meter, uh, so I'm going to try again. I'm going to move the, um, the cooling device because that's all that was off there before. So, re ready? Three, two, one. It's nice and steady, and we're all the way up there. Right, and that's blowing a hole in steel mesh. Yeah, that's melted fuckery out of that. And I think I'm probably lucky my power meter's still intact. You cut it off just in time, I think. I think we might have had a little problem with that tube. <laughs> I think our laser cutter might work a little better now. I think all that maths I've been doing, it's probably going to need redoing, isn't it? That's a good problem to have. Right, let's uh, let's put it back together. We'll put the the air boost back on, the lens back on, and everything, and we'll uh, speak to you guys in a second. Right, here we are again. Uh, we're going to do a cut with the old settings of 20 milliamps and um, two millimeters, two millimeters per second or whatever, and we're going to see how it goes. Right, fire in the hole, buddy. Let away. Oh man, that's going through. I ain't putting my goddamn tablet in the laser cutter, man. <laughs> you got mid bolts. Hang on, we got the air boost on, we got the fan running. Okay, well, it's not ideally running, but it's alright. Last thing we need to do is re plumb that fan. He's not extracting as much as he would normally. Right? That's right, yeah. Because he stinks. Oh, he stinks. Okay, well, I think it's fair to say that it's doing it. There are quite a lot of smoke coming out underneath. Yeah. Yeah, I'll stop that. Okay, at the next corner. Fuck, that stinks! Put that open the door. 
Let's think of the X base. Nope. But thanks for the offer. Um, is it? Maybe four millimeters per second would be more appropriate. You for real? Is it like that? Check out the bottom. Is that the way it is? I th I think I Shh. think move it up to four. She. Yeah. Should we be brave and try six? Six it is. Why not? Cool. Let's have it. Yeah, put it closer to the fan. Good call. <laughs> yeah. Good. Go for it. Oh yeah, that's going true. Shit. That's going true, dude. Just speed it up again. Ten. It's finished. Is this chiller running? Yeah. Okay. So we're thirteen point five on the shit. God, that stinks. We should say that again. Should we do that now? Let's do that now before we fuck around. What up, folks? Back again, and um, I'm, I'm, you guys mind being on camera? No. I'm, 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 I'm here with Simon and Scott, and we've got some good news from Reading Hackspace because we know about something, and we're gonna tell you about it, and it is that the laser tube in our laser cutter <laughs> was fucked from the day we got it because. If you look at the settings that I'm running here, I don't know if you can see that, but it clearly says cut eight millimeters a second. And we are cutting. And I'm moving at a clip. Seven and a half mil acrylic. And the quality of cut is you know, I think it's just maybe just not broke through the the back of the plastic, but when you were consider when you consider that we were cutting it two before, but the key thing for me is if you um, where the hell is the camera? If you look at the edge, focus boy, there we go. Um, if you look at the edge of that, I don't know if you can really see it. There we go. That is a much, much smoother cut than we were getting with any of the results that we had before. So we've got some really good news. The laser cutter is recommissioned, and we're going to need to do all of our science on it again because uh, it's got like four time. times more power than it's ever had. So, yeah, that's what's up. Thanks for watching. See you next time.